function composition allows us to combine a few simple functions into a more powerful and complicated function. An example would be passing the result of a simple function as an argument of a more complicated function. And I'm going to show you how we're going to use function composition to make our code better. I'll use the example of the email value object where we have the create method which was implemented in a functional manner. We are chaining extension methods on the result type to perform a set of validations and in the end if all of the validations pass we create a new email and return it as the result of the create method. The problem with this approach is that we are only returning one error at a time and you have to call the create method multiple times to find out everything that is wrong with the email that you specified. For example, you could specify an empty email and you would get that error. Then you could specify an email that is invalid and you would get that error. Then you could possibly specify an email that is too long. So it would be beneficial if we could get all of the errors for the email at the same time. And I'm going to show you how we're going to use function composition to solve this problem. As with any obstacle in functional programming, the solution is usually more functions. So what we're going to do is we're going to write more functions that are going to allow us to combine the results of these validations into a single result that we can return straight away. I'm first going to go over to the definition of the ensure method. And as you can see, it's currently defined as an extension method on the result of T class. So I'm going to take this implementation here and I'll head over to the base result class and I'm going to define the ensure method as a static method on this class. I'm going to get rid of the this argument because this is a static method and we can define the ensure method like this. Instead of the result object which currently does not exist, we're going to need a value that we're going to evaluate in the function that is the predicate. So I'm going to add the value as an additional argument here and now I can get rid of this check here completely and we can fall back to checking the predicate. So I'm going to pass it the value so that we can evaluate it. If the predicate evaluates to true, we're going to return a success result and pass in the value. Otherwise, if it evaluates to false, we're going to return a failure result with the specified error. So how we would use this in the email class is here, instead of calling ensure the extension method, we would call result ensure, which is the static method. And now we need a way to combine the results of these functions into a final result. So I'm going to create another static method on the result class that's going to combine the individual results into a final result. So let's define this method right under the ensure method. It's going to return a result of t and I'm going to call it combine. It's also going to be a generic method. And for the arguments, I'm going to define a params array of results so that I can pass them in one by one. So it's going to be params result of t and it's going to be an array and we can call it results. So we're going to pass in a few results to this combine method and we need to combine them to produce a final result. The only way for the final result to be a success result is for all of the results that we specify in the array to be successful. So we're going to rely on some link methods to perform these checks and then we're going to produce our final result. We can either check if all of the results are successful or if any of them is a failure result. What's more intuitive to me is to check if any of the results is a failure result. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say if results any and I can check if there is a failure result inside. Now I know that there's at least one result that is a failure. So I'm going to return a final failure result and I'm going to combine the errors from all of the results that are passed in. So I'm going to return our result.failure of t. We're going to specify the array of results by calling results, select many, and we're going to select all of the errors. We also need to make sure that we don't include any duplicate errors. So we can chain our call to distinct. This is going to return the distinct collection of errors. And now I just call to array to get the final array of errors. So this takes care of returning a failure result and I can also remove result here because I'm already inside of the result class. So we handled the case where we have failure results in our results array and we return a combined failure result. If we get to this point in the combined method, we need to return a success result. 
So I'm going to call the success method and we need to pass it the value that is going to be the final value of our combined result. The simplest approach and the one I'm going to take is I'm going to use the first result in the array and take the value from that result. So I'm going to say results, grab the first result and just take the value. So this takes care of combining multiple results into one final result and now we can write our function composition to achieve the desired behavior. So let's go back to the email class. So I'm going to replace the call to result create with a call to result combine. And what are we going to combine? We're going to call the result ensure static method and combine the results that we get back from the ensure method. So here we need to call result ensure and this is now going to compile. I'm going to just fix the remaining places where we need to call result ensure. So we specify result and we also need to pass it the value that is going to execute using the predicate. So we're going to pass in the email here, the email here and the email here. And now we have a function composition of a few simple functions. So if you take a look, we have a simple function here that is performing the validation on the email object. This is the validation function that is checking some constraint. And this is the error that we are returning if we fail the validation. So this is one simple function. Then we have two more simple functions and they all return a result back. And now we're taking the results of the simple function and we're passing them as the arguments into a more complicated function, which is the result combine. So combine is going to take the individual results and return back a combined result that we can use to map either to the new email value object instance or we return the combined list of failures. So we used function composition to combine all of our individual validation functions into one big function and we return all of the validation errors at once. So let's see how this actually works. I'm going to send a post request from Postman to our API to the endpoint that's going to register a new member and I'm going to leave the email intentionally empty to see what result we are going to back from our validation. So if I send the request and we take a look at the result, you can see that we get two errors which are returned by our email create method that now combines the multiple validations that we have defined and returns all of the failure results at once. So we get back the email is empty error, but we also get back the email invalid format error. If you're enjoying this video about function composition, make sure that you smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. So far I showed you how we can combine the results of multiple simpler methods, in this case the result ensure method, as the arguments into a more complicated method, which is the result combine, to achieve function composition. I also want to show you one more approach to function composition that does not include passing the results of simple function, but relies on you specifying multiple functions as the argument into a larger function. I know this might sound a little confusing without an example, so let's see how we would achieve this. Let's go to the definition of the result ensure method. And here I'm going to create another ensure method, which is going to be slightly different. Instead of accepting a function, which is our predicate and our error, I'm going to slightly modify this function to accept a tuple containing a predicate and an error and I'm actually going to make this into an array of tuples. So let's give it a name of functions, for example. And how we're going to implement this version of the ensure method is we're going to iterate over the functions and we're going to use the predicate and the error and apply it to the value. So I have a for each loop iterating over the function. I'm deconstructing each tuple into a predicate and an error. Now I'm going to use all of the methods that we created so far to implement this version of the ensure method. Let's create an array that's going to hold the intermediate result values. So I'm going to name it uh, results and let's instantiate a new list of result of t. And we're going to use this to hold our results that we're going to create inside of the for each loop. And this is going to be very simple. We're just going to add to the results and what are we going to call? We already have the ensure method from the previous example, which accepts a value, a predicate, and an error, and returns a result of t. 
So we're just calling the previous ensure method, which we defined here, and we're using it to populate the list of results. And now I can just return a call to combine and pass in the results and call to array to satisfy the result argument. So we implemented this version of the ensure method, which accepts an array of functions. I can even add params here so that I can specify as many functions as I want. And I'm using the ensure method from the previous example to validate the value using the predicate and the error for each of the functions. And in the end, I'm combining all of the results by using the combine method that we also defined in the previous example. So let's see how we would use this version of the ensure method in the email class. So here, instead of calling result combine, we're going to call result ensure. The first argument is supposed to be our email value. So I'm going to specify it. And now I need to specify an array of tuples where the first element is a predicate and the second element is the error that we return if the predicate fails. So let's just take this here, which is supposed to be our tuple elements, and we just define a simple tuple. And let's define them in a single row to make it more readable. Let's do the same for the second argument. So we define a tuple with the validation and the error, and also this here, and we define another tuple. So now we have this version of the ensure method where we are specifying the email value once, and we have an array of tuples which represents our validations, and they're going to be invoked one by one, and we're going to get back the result of errors just as we did in the previous example. Let me know in the comments which of the two approaches to function composition you enjoyed more and why. And until next time, stay awesome.